Lord, thank you that, that you are one who saves and that you've rescued us. And Lord, as we go into 2022, I just pray that uh, I thank you, first of all, that, uh, that we just get a fresh start. And Lord, in you, we always get a fresh start. Each day is new because of what Jesus did for us. So Lord, I pray that you'd open our hearts, uh, open our minds to your word, that you would shape us, mold us to be more and more like your son, Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. All right, quick update on Ross. Um, I know everybody's uh, kind of uh, asking about, about him. Uh, Ross and Lisa are completely, they're doing great. They're out of quarantine. Uh, as a matter of fact, he is leading a group of our uh, young adults to uh, the Passion Conference. Uh, right now, they're on their way. So, um, so he, this was scheduled a long time ago for, for this to, to happen. So God willing, he will be back next week, um, and, uh, uh, and we can continue on. But today, what we had scheduled was um, for myself and Elvis Gallegos, our, our missions pastor, to kind of walk through this particular place in Scripture um, where I think God's going to really show us some, some, some really cool things in there. Um, so speaking of young adults, uh, it was in that time period of my life, my kind of late 20s, where I was first saved, where, where I first came to, to know and trust Jesus. Rather than trusting myself, I finally started to trust in Jesus, and God saved me in, in that period of my life. And in that period of my life, I, I was playing rugby. Uh, I started playing in college, and then uh, as I grew, uh, kind of moved back here, I would continue to, to play. And, and if you know anything about rugby, it's a, it's a rough sport. It, it's, it's not only rough on the field, uh, but it's probably equally rough off the field. And uh, the, the, it kind of draws a crowd of just rough people. And there's kind of a culture of debauchery that kind of goes along with rugby. And that was the environment that I was in when God saved me. And, and I knew in my new faith that I needed to share this good news with those my teammates around me. And, and I knew that they wouldn't have a whole lot of interest in that. So what I did was I said, okay, well, I was the team captain at the time. And part of my job as team captain was before the, the match, we would gather together in the middle and kind of talk strategy and, and would give a pep talk and then we'd kind of go play the game. So I thought, you know what, I, I'm going to pray for that during that, during that time period. And, and so I got, gathered everybody together. And I said, guys, we're going to pray. And I just dove right into it. I didn't know what I was doing. I was a brand new believer. And, and I just dove right in so nobody would, would, would say anything or object. And, and uh, I had a prayer and I had my pep talk. And, and somehow I, I got the two kind of mixed together. And it was ugly. It was something like, God, thank you for letting us come out here and play this game today. Now let us go out there and rip their bleep, 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 and let us go, and we'll kick him in the blink, 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 and, and it was ugly. I, I mean, it was awful. These guys didn't know anything about prayer, but they knew that was not a good prayer. <laughs> so it raises the question, what is a good prayer? Before we even ask that question, what is prayer? Right? How do we grow in our prayer life? Why do we pray? These are questions that we're going to be wrestling with this month, for the month of January, as a, as a church and as individuals, so that we can grow in our prayer life, so that we can really anchor down our prayer life, so that as we go into 2022, we're not just going, going full out without going first to God. And saying, God, what, what do you want us to do? Making sure that we're aligned with what he has for us. And, and then also that we're doing what we're doing, not out of our own power, but in God's power. Right? That, that we are needing him. And, and so that's what we want to do as a church. So over these next this month of January, uh, let, me, let me read a quote from Tim Keller. By the way, it comes from this book, Tim Keller's book on prayer. You know, it's a, it's a really unique name, but, um, but, but the name of the book is it's one of the best books that I've read on prayer. And, and here's what Keller says. He says, prayer is the only entryway into genuine self-knowledge. It is also the main way we experience deep change, the reordering of our loves. Prayer is how God gives us so many of the unimaginable things he has for us. Indeed, prayer makes it safe for God to give us many of the things we desire. It is the way we know God, the way we finally treat God as God. Then he says, prayer is simply the key to everything we need to do 
and be in life. See, Keller got it. Like most of church history and, and what we see in Scripture is, is that prayer is absolutely critical to our life in Christ, to, to our relationship with God. It's the inward part of our faith, and it's where that relationship is, is formed. It's where we're shaped. And so as a church, we want to really spend a lot of time this, next, this, this month of January building good habits of prayer. So Sundays, we will be looking at different Scriptures on prayer. Then on Friday nights, we're going to gather together and worship and pray together as a, as a whole body. Then in our life groups, as we do life group, we want to spend significant time in prayer. Not just talking about prayer, but actually praying together. And, and, and then also, they'll be doing, we'll be uh, sending out, if you want to sign up on the website, to get just a daily prayer, uh, wrestling through questions about prayer and, and helping us to understand and grow an understanding of what is prayer. And how do we grow in that? That'll be all we do this month so that we can build habits and become a people of prayer and really start this year devoted in prayer, building new habits, praying, and asking God to do some amazing things. So today, we're going to be in Colossians 4, verses 2 through 6. And I'm going to ask Elvis Gallegos to come out, uh, and we're going to kind of wrestle through this together because uh, what I want Elvis to, to, to kind of help us with is, is in this scripture, some of it's fairly straightforward, but then how does this play out? And I want Elvis to kind of help us see how does this play out in the, the life of 121 with our partners and, and mission partners all across the globe and locally, and, and then also in the lives of individuals here. So Elvis uh, is joining us, and, and so in the first thing we're going to see as we, as we kind of look at Colossians 2, here's the, the big idea, sorry, Colossians 4, the big idea here is Paul's going to tell us three things. He's going to say that we are to pray with eyes wide open, for doors to wide open, and that we are to invest in others. We're to pray with our eyes wide open, for doors wide open, openly investing in others. And so there's really kind of three pieces there. And the first thing we're going to see is that we need to pray with our eyes wide open. And, and so in verse 2, he says, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Now, what we need to understand here is Paul isn't just urging us to pray. He's asking us to pray continuously, steadfastly, devoting ourselves to prayer, uh, to be busily engaged in prayer. Uh, oftentimes what we do is we tend to be more just kind of like, hey, whenever there's a need that comes up, we pray, right? Or, or maybe it's, there's kind of a routine we have, but it, we're not really heavily engaged. As a matter of fact, what Tim Keller says in the book is he says oftentimes what we do is rather than pray, we worry in a Godward direction, right? Can anybody identify with that? Most, uh, some of my prayers are really just me worrying towards God, and so what we want to do is we want to grow in our prayer life as we do this. And if you want to kind of grow in your prayer life, one way to do that, kind of the first step that I would recommend, is if you go to the, our website and go under the eight ways to follow Jesus, that's our discipleship curriculum, there's a, a module on prayer in there. And I would encourage you to spend some time there. It gives you kind of a pattern and a uh, kind of a format to, to, to pray, some tips, some hints on, on how we can grow in our prayer life. And then to turn around and pass that on to someone else. Share some with somebody else what you're learning about prayer. Because as we start to pass it on to someone else, as we all know, we start to get, we start to, it becomes our own. We start to, to really uh, internalize it as we go. So, so one of the things we see in there is that prayer is a conversation. It's a conversation with the, with the king. And so just like we, when, going before a king, we acknowledge who he is. And then we, we confess our sins. Then we ask him for, for what's on our heart. And then we listen. And it's in those spaces where he shapes us, where we're shaped and molded. That's what prayer is. And, we're to, and because it's a conversation, because it's a dialogue, we're to, to go back. It takes time, and we have to go back constantly and, and continue to go before the Father. That's why Jesus tells the parable in Luke 18, starting in verse 1. He, he tells this story about a, an unrighteous judge, a, a judge who doesn't really have a lot of concern with justice, right, which is a problem when you're a judge, uh, and a widow who comes before him and, and pleads for, for justice, and, and he kind of dismisses her. And she comes before him again and again and again. And she keeps coming before him. And the unrighteous judge finally relents and just says, fine, I'll give you what you asked for. 
And then Jesus makes the point that if, if this unrighteous judge gives justice, how much more so will the, the righteous God of the universe bring justice to us when we, when we continue to go before him like that? So this is this idea of, of continuously going before him and then to continuously go before him with open eyes. So you see this kind of pattern in verse 2 where he ta- tells us to, to pray, to watch, and to thank. Pray, watch, thank. And, and so we go at it with open eyes. And I, I think, I don't know about you, my kids, for some reason, I don't mean necessarily that it's literal, literally have to have our eyes open. For some reason, my kids have gotten the idea that, that if you pray with your eyes open, it's like a sin or something. Uh, and, and so at dinner time, this happens all the time, we'll be praying and you will say amen. And one of them, it never fails, will say, so-and-so had their eyes open. I'm like, wait a sec. The only way you would know that is if you had your eyes open, right? Uh, but but we, we pray with our eyes open. What that means is that, that we're to, to, to pray and watch what God is doing. We pray and we expectantly watch and go, okay, God, what are you going to do here? We pray and we watch. And what that does is it starts this cycle. Uh, we pray and we watch and we see. And then that drives us to more prayer. And then we thank God for what he's doing. And it drives us to more prayer. And it kind of starts this cycle. And then what else it does is it gives us then, once we pray and watch, Let's say I'm praying for my neighbor and I'm watching to see what is God doing there. He helps us then to see that there's ways that I can help, that I can be part of that, that I can actually be an answer to that prayer by engaging my neighbor or helping my neighbor with something or whatever it is. So, so those are ways that we pray with open eyes. So Elvis, help us understand what, what are uh, some other places where, at our church where you've seen people just praying with open eyes like that? Yeah, there's a few groups that come to mind, and it's our Vision 2025 prayer group and then our, our prayer walk team, uh, but the, the Vision 2025, for you guys that aren't familiar with this, is really the big initiatives that God's leading us into this path over the next five years to really establish worship. Those are things like our Bible translation team, uh, Africa research team, a new initiative in Africa, neighborhood engagement, Lionheart scholarships, things like that, but this is a group that's led by Valerie Levi that gathers up uh, weekly, uh, Sunday mornings. Now they're gathering up uh, virtually, but they are receiving these prayer requests from our, our Vision 2025 teams and just lifting up those prayers uh, that they're receiving weekly. And that's also something that uh, they've really gotten to a routine, if I'm not mistaken. I think Valerie's got a great way where she prays through on a daily basis for every different team, whether it's Monday, Lionheart Scholarships, Tuesdays, more neighborhood opportunities, et cetera, Wednesday, Thursday, so on and so forth. So that's one group that's just continued to faithfully meet and committed to prayer uh, before we launched Vision 2025. And then the second one is a prayer walk team. It's really started through our Spanish service. About three individuals got together once a month, Saturday mornings, gathering up here. It's now grown to about nine or ten folks gathering up. Get together here at the building Saturday mornings, pray together, and then get out and prayer walk our neighborhood. And uh, Trailwood Mobile Home Park here, they're, they're breaking up into groups and walking up and down those streets and just praying that God will just, just uh, with open eyes, that God will open up opportunities to, to just meet people and pray for people. It's just been a great way to invite people in. I know there's been a family that, that through that started joining the prayer team and now is attending our Spanish service. But it's a great way where our Spanish and our English service can come together, prayer walk the uh, Mustang Drive, the apartment complex, but just to eagerly watch to see how God's moving through those teams. And what I love about both of those teams is that they're praying and then they're watching and they're tracking, okay, what is God doing in each of these? And, and, and they're celebrating what God has done as, they, as they're praying. And I think it's just so cool to see the, the fruit of that prayer, especially in the neighborhood around us and all the things God is doing uh, there as we go. So, so we're to pray with open eyes is the first thing he says. Then the second thing is that we're to pray for open doors. And so in verses 3 and 4, here's what Paul says. He says, at the same time, pray for us also, that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, that I might make it clear, which is how I ought to speak. So did y'all catch where Paul is as he's writing this letter? He's in prison, right? Now, what I find fascinating here is that his prayer is not, hey, pray for me that I'll get out of prison. His prayer is pray that, you would, that God would open a door so I can share Christ in the midst of prison, wherever he is. 
It's, it's God, he could pray for God to open the doors to the prison. God's done that before, right? For him. But instead, he prays. Don't, he doesn't pray for the circumstances to change. He prays for him to be faithful in the circumstances, for God to open doors of opportunity within the circumstances that he's in. And if you look at Paul's prayers throughout Scripture, he, he very, it, he, we don't see him praying for other people to, to get out of situations. Instead, we, he, we see him praying that, that, that they would be faithful in those situations or that, they would open, that God would open the eyes of their heart or, or, or see them or grow in knowledge of him or whatever it is. But, but that's kind of how Paul rolls. And I think for us, we can learn a lot from that. Because oftentimes what we pray for is to get out of situations, right, rather than into situations. And, and, and I think there's, there's nothing wrong. We see it in Scripture to, for us to pray for you know, healing and, and out of these situations. But, but we should have a balance there. Are we also praying for, for God to work within the situations that we're in? Or, or for us to, to even put us in situations where it might not be comfortable for us, but it's an opportunity for us to be a light, to share the gospel, to, to help people to see and know Jesus. Uh, one of the, the, the phrase he uses is here is the idea of open doors. And, and we see that throughout Scripture. In 1 Corinthians 16, he says, But I will stay in Ephesus until Pentecost, for a wide door for effective work has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. So, so we see this, this picture of an open door. So Ellis, help us to understand, like, what are some of the things, the door, open doors that we're starting to see and, and some of those things that we're praying for as a church? So what we've noticed, I, a lot of our global partners, there's been incredible opportunities where God's opened up doors for a lot of our global partners. But one in particular I want to focus on is Pioneers. I think you guys are pretty familiar with Pioneers. I've uh, been partnered with them for a long time. A lot of our missionaries, we call global workers, have been sent out through there, trained up, sent out, and supported through Pioneers. But if you, we look at really over these last few years and through this pandemic, the engagement online through technology and media has been through the roof, obviously, too, with the fact that everybody has a phone, whether rich, poor, living here, global, wherever you live, that realize that people have a phone or devices that they're on online. So Pioneers is developing, and, and it's exciting for us to talk about it today because we're partnering with them now and being a part of something they're calling Media to Movements. And this is where they're really finding a way to connect with those seeking online. Think about it in three ways. They're leveraging technology and omni-channels to make disciples online. Two, just creating this uh, content, if you will, to engage and get people to just interact. I think they've also realized that, hey, people are going to be more open and vulnerable in connecting with you and having a chat online. Uh, before meeting in person because the ultimate goal the third piece is really that they want to go start online but eventually move offline and discipleship face to face so it's exciting for us to be a part of it we're starting a, a team here ourselves at 121 to be more involved in media be more involved in technology and how to reach the nations especially the way people groups are just moving migrating all across the globe so it's a great way for us to get more involved in missions through through uh, media and we have a short video here we can show you. We love the country God has called us to in Eastern Europe. But ministry has been slow going. For 10 years, we tried different approaches to build relationships with spiritually hungry people. Humanitarian aid, English classes, running a business, flood relief, Christmas child boxes, and believe it or not, goat farming. We met a lot of people through our efforts they just weren't interested in Jesus or spiritual conversations. We were doing good things, but it never led to the discipleship relationships we were looking for. That's when we decided to try media. We learned about a strategy from a team in another country using media to catalyze disciple-making movements, or media to movements for short. 
In this strategy, media serves as a way to find and connect with those seeking spiritual answers online. But it doesn't stop there. The goal is to move these relationships offline and see people become disciples of Jesus who continue making disciples among their friends and family. It took us six months to launch our first campaign. The response we saw exceeded our expectations. We ran Facebook ads asking, are you one of those people who had a dream of the man in white? Referring to Jesus. 23,000 people watched 100% of our video ads. 2,500 people visited our website. 110 people messaged us. 10 requested a Bible. And two people met with us in person. In 20 days, we had more engagement with spiritually seeking people than the first 10 years combined. It felt like we had been using a small fishing pole, and now we had a large net. As a result of our first effort, we realized we needed to build systems for prayer, media development, and partnerships to follow up with those who responded. Since our launch in Bosnia, God has expanded the use of digital strategies to nearby countries like Serbia. After nine months, they saw 281 new people involved in a discipling relationship and 58 people accept Christ as Lord. God continues opening doors to share what we've learned, and we now coach 18 other teams using the same strategy. Our goal is to see media to movement initiatives take root in all 44 countries in Europe, so they too can experience an increase in fruitfulness that ignites a powerful movement of God. You don't have to be a media person to do this, but it does take commitment. There are people from a variety of ministries ready to help you. To get started or connect with others, go to www.mediatomovements.org to choose a pathway that's right for you. So that's an example of, of doors that God is opening. And, and I think we, we also see those places all throughout our own lives. So, so these are things that we're giving you are ways that you can pray for open doors. Uh, but also, who are those people in your life who don't know Christ? Are you praying for open doors for them? And then also, are you praying for those who are in your circle, who are your friends, who are actively sharing their faith? We need to be praying for each other. Paul asked them, hey, pray for me. And we need to be praying for each other as we go to life group. We should be praying for each other that, hey, that you would have this opportunity to speak to your coworker or your neighbor or whatever it is. Uh, Jesus tells us in, in Matthew 9 that uh, the, the, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And so pray to the Lord of the harvest to raise up new laborers. And we should all be praying for, for God to raise people, more and more people up to share the, the, the gospel, to, to share the good news of Jesus as we move forward in this. So these are all ways that we can pray uh, for open doors as we look at this. And, and Jesus tells, or, and Paul tells us here that, um, that what he's asking for us is open doors to be able to declare the mystery of Christ. Now, what does that word mystery mean? I know most of us, what, what do we typically think of when we think of mystery? Well, most of the time we think of Scooby-Doo, right? If Scooby-Doo, there's something hidden, and they have to gather up all the clues to figure out what it is that's hidden. But biblically, what we see is that word mystery means something a little bit different. There's something hidden, but, but rather than trying to figure it out, it's something hidden that only God can reveal. And God has revealed this mystery. The mystery is that of Jesus, how, how we tend to seek after and try and pursue and try and earn and, and, and do all the right things so that we can be made right with God. But the mystery, the, the twist is that that'll never happen. They can only happen through Jesus and what God has done in Jesus. That only through what Jesus did, that, that he wipes our slate clean. So no matter what we do, if we trust in Jesus, that is how we find salvation. That is how we find joy. That is how we find life in him. Uh, in, in Colossians 1, at the very beginning of this letter, Paul, uh, Paul actually defines what he means by mystery. And he says, he, said, he calls it the mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And I love that phrase because all of us are, are, are seeking, everyone we talk to is seeking glory in different areas. 
But, but the, the, the paradigm here is that if we, we, we will we'll continue to run into roadblocks as we seek our own glory, but if we will set aside our own glory and, and, and follow Christ and give him the glory, then we participate in his glory. And that's where glory is found. That's where hope is found. Everyone we talk to is seeking hope in somewhere. But the mystery is that that hope is actually found in Jesus. And that's the only place where we can find joy. We can find true joy, true life, and life abundantly is in that mystery of of Jesus. And what I love about the way this mystery is described is it's that God is the one who reveals the mystery, but then Paul says, I, I, I'll pray for me that I can reveal the mystery. So which one is it? Is it God or is it Paul? Is it us? Who reveals the mystery? And the answer is yes. It's both. God, God uses us to, to declare the, this mystery, to help people kind of understand it and, and navigate it, but yet it's God who comes in in his Holy, with his Holy Spirit and, and changes the heart of people. And, and this should take so much pressure off of us, right? Because we, as we look at this mystery and what that looks like, uh, we don't have to convince someone. We don't have to, to, to really uh, make, the, make them understand. All we have to do is be faithful to, to, uh, to share and explain, here's this mystery, and then let God pull up the veil and reveal to them what it is that's happening there. So we are to pray with open eyes, then we're to pray for open doors. And then the last thing he says is we are to intentionally invest in those outside. So in verses 5 and 6, he says, Walk in wisdom towards outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. So he says, pray for open doors, and then when God opens the door, walk through it. Walk through it with wisdom to those who are, who are outside the faith. That, that we're to walk through it. And he tells, tells us two specific ways. Walk, we use wisdom in our time and use wisdom in our words. So, but before we even talk about those, let's talk about those, th- this outsider. Elvis, what is an outsider and, and what does that look like? Yeah, so what he's referring to here is one that's outside the faith, a non-believer and, and one who is lost. And so when I think of this, and, and uh, I also want to... Let me just also invite you into these teams that I keep mentioning, these groups, whether it's our prayer groups that are gathering up or even the technology group, the media to movements team that we're putting together here. But another way that I want to invite you in is is through our mission trips. And so this is, we've been for years going on trips, on missions. Now, recently we haven't been, but it's going to be a big year this year. And we're going to have a lunch, an interest lunch on all our trips coming up January 30th. If you're interested in that, please join us. How You can just be praying through to see if God will open up that door for you to travel with us and to partner or to really support our partners that are out on the field that are these front lines of sharing the word with the outsiders. One, uh, we have a few trips potentially planned to India this year. But uh, another one that I want to focus on right now is the trip, the partnership that we have in the Czech Republic. Uh, we are there with Young Life. We've been there for many years. And this is a country that is over 80% of the population is atheist. So the, the religion, uh, atheism is the, the religion in the, the Czech Republic. So we have an incredible opportunity with God's open up a door for us to travel and support our partners there. Put on a weekly camp where you will see 70, now this was pre-COVID, but I think you'll see 70 to 80, 90 students come. And for us to have that opportunity to invest wisely and be with those or share the word with the outsiders. And so an incredible way where God's moving through the youth there with an incredible partnership. But, but yeah, again, just invite you into those. And also, please just always be looking out or just stay up to speed on the QR codes behind the chairs. It's always stuff happening like this, that, that ways that you can get invited into an opportunity to be praying and see what God's opened up stores. That's awesome. So... In order for us to walk with wisdom, in order for us to walk with outsiders, we have to step outside, right? And, and so for the, the year, for this next year, 2022, what Ross has kind of laid out, he started to lay out, and we'll kind of continue to talk about it, uh, but what God has, has, has led our leadership to do is to, to really kind of focus on outside as the theme for 2022, And so what that looks like is it means, first of all, for us to get outside the walls of the church, 
Not just to gather here, but then also what are we doing to get outside, to, to serve others, to, to live out our faith, to have those conversations with outsiders who are outside of these walls. And then secondly, to, uh, to get outside of our comfort zone. So for this year, what would it look like for each, one, each person here to get outside of their comfort zone in one area of their life? And then the third piece to this is, is 121 Outdoors. And I'll talk about that uh, here in just a minute. But, but let's, let's dig in a little bit to uh, this idea of outside the four walls. Elvis, help us understand what, what are ways, what, how could that look? Well, for one, we've been really involved outside the walls. And, and you've heard us talk a lot about reaching our schools. So that's just a, God has been opening up some incredible doors of just, you, we've seen the fruits of just uh, middle school girls starting Bible studies, uh, new, new uh, FCA starting at middle school. So really want to invite you as a body to get more involved in our schools as we're trying to start up uh, beach clubs, support more FCAs, be more involved in Young Life, Students Standing Strong, just prayer groups that Michelle mentioned that's meeting up at Timberline Elementary, just ways that you can engage and be involved in the schools, whether you have a student there or not. We're always looking for volunteers and uh, just assist with those that are leading up those, uh, those efforts there. Two is really praying through a stronger partnership with World Relief here on Mustang Drive because of the, the, the increase of refugees to the DFW area, especially Afghan refugees. We've been working and talking about what would it look like to house, have some families here on Mustang Drive where we as a body can minister to them daily. Uh, uh, and, and so what we're trying to do is put together something we call a good neighbor team that would really just come alongside these families that can move here into our community and we would just love them well, whether it's just taking them to the grocery store, uh, just praying for them, just having community, connecting them to the schools or the community outreach center, different things that we're already in relationship with and can connect them to. And then the third is um, serve day in the fall. We're going to put on a big serve day where as a body we'll get together here in the morning on a Sunday, but we will be that day for us worshiping as a church. We'll be out and serving our community and all our local partners. So the entire body at 121 being outside these walls and servicing, that will be how we will worship together. So just really excited of, of how we'll do that uh, this coming fall. I've, I've loved seeing, especially the reaching our schools, how the, do the doors that have been opened inside our schools has really been uh, amazing. And that's come from a lot of prayer for, from teachers and parents of students who are in these schools uh, and, and then our, our, our teams here at the church praying and praying and praying for these schools. And, and it's, it, it's really it's amazing to see some of the, how these doors have opened and some of the fruit uh, that's come from that. Well, how about outside our comfort zone? What, what, what's an example of that? Yeah, I would... I would definitely say the number one is our 121 Espanol service. It's been incredible how God's just continued to bring people and, uh, at the 5 o'clock here on Sundays. But it's our kids' ministries is growing. And we have over 25 kids now. And so there's a need for volunteers there. And you don't have to know Spanish. Our kids all know English. But just an incredible way to meet a need as so many new believers are coming and just hearing Arnaldo's teaching there. So... Uh, to have adult supervision and volunteer there at the five is a huge need that, that could be outside your comfort zone. The second piece would be uh, the, our ESL program that we're starting January 23rd here at the building. So we've partnered with, uh, with a few other local churches and praying through a full year's prayer, just what was the biggest need here in the community? And it continues to be English classes. So we're going to offer English classes Sunday evenings from 6.30 to 8. And free child care, which that was something we had to pray for, but we knew that that was the one thing that was really probably holding a lot of folks back to be able to attend. So we're going to remove that. And ha so we're really praying through for volunteers, teachers, assistants. You don't have to know a second language, but that's just another way to be outside your comfort zone and, and being a part of that ESL program. That's great. And then 121 outside, Outdoors, you've seen uh, some kind of teasers on that. Uh, if you're at the budget meeting, Ross talked about it a little bit. But it's, uh, what that is, is we want this next year for us to be taking a lot of different trips to the outdoors. As small groups of people, maybe 8 to 12, uh, doing something, an activity that they love to do that's outdoors. Whether that's fly fishing or uh, mountain biking or whatever it is, to go out, do that activity 
but then also bake in significant time to be out in God's creation in solitude and, and just to really seek God. And then to as, as this group gathers together to, to be, have meaningful conversation. It would be a, a great opportunity also to, to bring a friend, to bring one of those outsiders who, who don't know Jesus and say, hey, come along, because maybe they love the, uh, the kayaking or whatever you're doing, but yet while they're there, that they'll have meaningful time where they can experience the goodness of God and have meaningful friendships with those who, who know Christ. Uh, so this is something that we're going to be doing this next year. If you have an interest in leading one of these trips, you have a passion, something you're passionate about, want to lead a trip, let either Elvis or I know, and, and we'll get you on the list to kind of gather together and kind of do an, an interest meeting of, of, of what that looks like. Uh, but we're excited about this this year of what that could be as we all get outside uh, in, in this area. So Elvis, I know you're uh, going to do one of the trips. What are you going to do? Yeah, my family's lived in New Braunfels for a long time, and I've, I've heard the fly fishing, especially the Guadalupe River and the trout, are incredible. I've never fly fished. I've always wanted to do it, so I feel like God could be just opening up a door there to say, let's take a group of guys, be outdoors, be in God's Word and His creation, and get an opportunity to, to fly fish down south. But also, I think even my wife had mentioned, uh, I've just recently took a trip uh, over Thanksgiving to New York City. It was just an incredible time, but uh, to... to to see, to be a part of there, but Central Park was really where God was showing her that, hey, what would this look like to take a group of women there? Could we really pray through and just be a part of Central Park, be outdoors, his creation with a group of women, worshiping, uh, just praying through. So those are a few things that I, I hope God continues to open up those doors for us. That's great. So, so that's kind of an overview of, of 2022 and one of the big initiatives is this outdoor theme. Uh, there's outside theme that, that, we're, um, uh, that we're, we're doing. So, but what Paul tells us here is that we are to, to, to invest in those who are outside. And he tells us kind of two pieces. We're to walk with them in using our time as well as our words. So when he uses this time, he says we're to make the best use of our time. Uh, that word literally means to, to buy out something, to buy up something. It's the picture of, of an investment. Like I buy up something in order to then turn around and sell it for a, a big return, right? So just picture if you had a time machine and you could go back 15 years and buy Amazon stock or Tesla stock or whatever it is, right? That you would, be, you would, you would know you'd be buying it knowing there's an incredible return on that investment coming right? And, and the same is true here. He's, he's kind of giving us this picture of there is no greater return on investment of your time than if you're having conversations, if you're spending time, investing time with those who don't know Jesus. Be, because it's an eternal reward, right? If they come to know and trust Christ, then, then the rewards of that will continue on for eternity. So, so the return on investment there is like infinite, uh, as far as what that looks like and how we spend our time with this. So we're to spend our time wisely by, by investing it in those who, who don't know Christ. And, and we know there's, there's lots of different ways that we can spend our time, right? We have a bazillion different things we can do. But what would it look like this year in 2022 to, to strategically invest our time in someone who doesn't know Christ? So we're to invest our time, and then also he's telling us we're to, to, you, to be wise in our words. He says we're to have gracious speech seasoned with salt. And, and so the, the picture here is that we have you know, kindness in our speech. We have, uh, we're, we're encouraging in our speech, right? And, and that alone would stand out from the world. But then also we're to be seasoned with salt. And that picture is, is the picture of we, we season things with flavor, Right? So we're to be kind and, and, and we're to be interesting. We're, to, we're to, to be excited about what we're talking about. I, I think of all the, as I was studying this passage, this probably convicted me more than any, anything else. Just this idea that, that as Christians, what, what I tend to find myself doing is I tend to tone things down, right? Especially when I'm talking about Jesus with, with those who, who don't know him. I, I kind of tend to tone it down because I don't want to, you know, make it feel awkward or, or anything else that kind of makes it bland, right? I, I, go to, I go to lunch occasionally with a friend of mine who uh, he orders, um, when, when he orders, he orders a piece of chicken or whatever it is with like take off all the seasoning, no flavor whatsoever, and, and then some broccoli on the side with no seasoning or no flavor. And, and, and because dietarily, that's what he needs to do. And the restaurant does that. They oblige him, no problem. But what if that restaurant said, you know what, since he doesn't like that, that, that flavoring, let's make all of our menu items 
flavor free, right? Try and make them as, as, as appealing to, you know, as, as, as uh, open to anyone as, as we can. Well, the problem is nobody would come to the restaurant, right? Because it's, it's bland. And so us as Christians, we should not be bland. We should be some of the most exciting, interesting people that people come in contact with because we have the, 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 the knowledge, the secret to eternal life. We, we know the mystery. It's been revealed to us. We know we have life and life abundantly because of what Jesus did for us. We of all people should experience joy and excitement as we explain, as we talk about who Jesus is and what he's done. So, so what would that look like this year for us to, to just step out in a little bit more excitement and boldness in our speech and our words as we're talking to different people? And, and, and let's face it, there's a lot of different things that people can engage in. So if we're kind of talking to them and we're kind of bland, then they're going to engage in something else. But if we're excited about what we're saying, people are drawn to excitement. Even if they don't agree with what you're saying, if you're excited about it, they're going to give it a listen. And who knows what God will do? Who knows how God will, will pull back that veil and show himself to? Now, you might be thinking, oh, wow, that's a lot. Right? How, how do I do that? Have you seen my schedule? I mean, to now to, you're saying I need to invest time in those who, who, who don't know Christ. Uh, I need to change my, my words and how I speak. Uh, we, we've talked about a lot of different things here. Like, gosh, what, what, which one do I even start with? The answer to how goes back to the beginning of what Paul is saying here. Because what Paul is saying, he's not just saying three things that we're supposed to do. He's telling us that this kind of this, this flow of how it works. And so if we will go and we will start by praying with open eyes, really praying specifically for things and watching God work in that. And then if we will pray for open doors, Really watching and, and, and begging God to open doors of opportunity for, to, to talk to people, that, that we would shift our prayers to not just be about getting out of situations, but, but help, God, helping, asking God to help us get into those conversations, into those, those situations. Then what will happen is when he opens up those doors, he will also give us the time to do that. We'll have been praying so much for, for, for these people that we're so invested that, yes, we'll gladly give up some time to spend time with this person because God is answering that prayer. And then we'll also have the words to say because as we've been praying to God, now what we're saying is just an overflow of our time with him. We'll be gracious and seasoned with salt because we started with prayer, a continuous prayer, a prayer with eyes wide open and a prayer for open doors. So whatever happened with that, that rugby prayer that I gave? I mean, let's just face it, it was a debacle. And for, for years, I got ridiculed for that. I mean, at the banquet, they, they gave me a, a Jesus action figure with, with kind of instructions on the back on how to pray. And, and I, it just, it continued for, for years. But here's what happened. It also opened up a lot of doors. Even though it was a disaster, uh, people were now paying attention. And they watched for a little bit to see, okay, is this, this a fad or is this the real deal? And they saw that there was change, that I was a different person. And then as uh, we go, there was this idea, this, they started to, uh, to ask questions. And it started to open up doors for, for me to dialogue with people and to, to step into their lives because I had already thrown myself out there, right? I, I had already uh, kind of made a fool of myself. There was really nothing to lose. Uh, and, and then because I was out of my comfort zone, it just, God brought these conversations. And, and uh, over the years, I've had at least one or two of them kind of reach back out to me and, and, and they told me that they're now following Jesus. And I know it wasn't because of that prayer. It was, it was in spite of that prayer. Uh, but it's cool to see how God opened doors even through what was kind of a debacle to begin with. And the same is true for us. As we go into 2022, God will open these doors. If we are praying for God to, to open doors, we're praying with eyes wide open, then he will do that. So what about you? In 2022, what does it look like for you? I want to challenge you to pray with your eyes wide open. Find a few things that you can pray, go, go to God with over and over and over again and praying specifically and watching what he's doing, watching expectantly, and then pray for open doors. 
Not just to get out of situations, but, but pray that God would put you in situations, even situations that are uncomfortable, that he would take you out of your comfort zone and put you in there. And, and then pray that, that and then for us to be able to step forward, I want to challenge you to step into those doors, to be able to walk with those who don't know Christ, carve out time, and to use our words, that our words would express the joy that's inside us. Because we of all people, should have more joy than anybody else because of what Jesus did, because of the mystery of who Jesus is. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. And Lord, just grateful for the many doors that you have opened up this year. And our prayers this morning is that you will open up many more. That we will just be open to what you are doing and how you're moving through our local community, through our national churches or global partners, and that you allow us to be a part of that. Lord, will you give us the, the, the courage to be bold and step outside of our comfort zone? Will you just give us, uh, clear up our calendars and just remove the busyness of our lives and make, spend our time wisely and make it a priority to seek those that are lost? But use us, Lord. That we would just anchor in prayer on a daily basis and just commit to see what you are doing next. And we will be bold and try something new this year and get outside of our comfort zone. Just move us, unite us as a body as we continue to reach those that are lost. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Let's take a few, take a moment here and just be still and just uh, hear the Lord and seal anything he's revealed to you today.